many of us like challenges, don't we? You know, many of us would like to see, you know, how we can possibly do some of the more difficult things, you know, to try our hand at. Sometimes, you know, depending like if you're on a team, some of the physical challenges, maybe being able to run the fastest or lift the most compared to somebody else. Or maybe it's a mental challenge, maybe trying to figure something out, or even doing something as like putting a puzzle together. Or maybe work challenges, you know, uh, trying to outperform how you did the past year. Or even interpersonal challenges, you know, based on like our popularity or the number of friends that we might have. There's just something about setting out to do something or setting some kind of a goal, large or small, and actually achieving it. You know, being successful at whatever we're attempting. It feels good to succeed. It feels good to take credit for an accomplishment. It feels good to know that we are important and valuable and capable of doing all sorts of things. Well, Ash Wednesday is all about challenges, right? Don't we almost always use this season to challenge ourselves? You know, what will I give up this year? Will I pick something easy or will I pick something really difficult? Will it be a favorite food? Favorite drink? Will I choose to add a few extra things these 40 days? Maybe attend a daily mass, go to stations, read Bible, a passage from the Bible every now and then. Take, make sure that you read that little book every day. Say a few extra prayers. Will I do a few extra nice things for people? Maybe give a few extra dollars to charity or donate some food or clothing? And praying and fasting and almsgiving, all the hallmarks of this holy season. Can I do it? Will I make it? Am I strong enough or diligent enough or committed enough or stubborn enough to see it through? We'll have to see. But if I do, if I do make it, I have a pretty good idea of how I'll feel, right? I'll feel proud. I feel proud of what I was able to accomplish, proud of meeting the challenge, proud that I was able to set a goal and meet it, right? Well, nothing could be further from the spirit of this season. And just to talk about the season of Lent like I just did, I should feel, uh, if this is the criteria for a successful Lent, I'm embarrassed to even talk about it like this. I know better. You know better. At least I should. This season of Lent is not about seeing if we have what it takes. It's not about challenging ourselves to some kind of a contest and then feeling impressed with ourselves if we succeed. Lent is not about making others aware of the good we're doing so that they'll be impressed and have a greater respect for us. It's not about any of those things. And the ashes we receive tonight are a powerful sign of that reality. Ashes are there to remind ourselves of our own mortality. It reminds us of our complete dependence on God. It reminds us that the world does not revolve around us. And no matter how often we seem to act like it does, it reminds us that God is God and we are not. <clears throat> and I certainly don't diminish any of the good things that we engage in in Lent. We need to do these things during this holy season in Lent because they are important and they are tremendously helpful and they can bring about a great change in us provided we engage in all these activities with the proper attitude, the proper focus, with the right intentions, with the willingness to open ourselves to let God get to us, let God change us from within, so to speak. And so Lent has 
absolutely nothing to do with feeling proud about what we're able to accomplish during these 40 days. Rather, Lent is all about being grateful for all that God has accomplished and that God is accomplishing for us, within us, and through us. We need God completely and continually and for all time. We need God for every good thing, most importantly, for our very being, for our very essence, for our very souls. Put simply, our lives are His. And may all our Lenten practices help us to embrace that truth and live in the light of it. And at the end of these 40 days of Lent, may each of us trust in our God a little more deeply, hope a little more joyfully in His promises, and surrender ourselves a little more completely in His love, in His mercy, in His will, and in His tender care. Have a blessed Lent, everyone.